uh, a new concept um, that relates to tags. And we'll do that so that we can look at the link tag, the actually the A tag for A standing for anchor. All right. Um, if I were to tell you, you know, go to my car and get something out of it for me, the logical question for you would be which car, right? If you look outside, there's about, without exaggerating, 15 million cars in the parking lot. All right. So therefore, me telling you to go to my car isn't enough information. I need to give you some additional ins information about my car. All right. Now, I could give additional information a bunch of different ways. I could give, um, I could tell you what my license plate number was, if I knew what my license plate number was. I could tell you the make and model of my car. I could tell you what bumper stickers were on my car. I could tell you any number of things about my car to get you to know which one is mine so you could go to the correct one. <clears throat> in other words, I'd, I'd tell you some characteristics of my car. I, I'd give you some characteristics of my car uh, to differentiate between my car and all the other cars out there so you know exactly which one to go to. Links on web pages are like that. It's not enough for me to say, I have a link on my web page. Well, that's great, but a link to what? Right? Could be a link to a whole bunch of things. Could be a link to any of the two billion web pages that are out there. All right? And this time, I'm not exaggerating. All right? So therefore, I need to give some additional information about a link. So. The A tag is the first tag that we're going to look at, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> that also has additional information about it. So it's not enough just to say it's a link. We have to say a link to what? And we can link to a couple different things. We can link to several different things. And the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at creating a link to another person's website. So not our website, not our web pages, but to another person's website. If we're going to do that, <coughs> the link is going <coughs> to, excuse me, the link tag will look something like this. Let's say I wanted to create a link to Cleveland State's web page. All right. It's an A tag, but as I said before, I have to give some additional information about it. <coughs> And that information is the href attribute. <clears throat> and, and within, mandatory? pardon me? Which space? Between the A and the A. Yeah, this is mandatory. What do I put in the href? I put the URL or the address of the web page. And I start it with HTTP. HTTP indicates hypertext protocol. It's the way by which hypertext transfer protocol. I was wondering where the other T went. Uh, hypertext transfer protocol. It relates to the manner which web pages are transferred between two computers. Then I can have my text that I want to be the link. Typically, by default, links are blue and underlined. So whatever the text I want to be will be between the start and end link tag. So let's look at this a little more closely. All right. The start tag is a little different than the start tags we've seen before. We've looked at tags like this before where we've had H1 and we've had some text and an end H1. Here our start tag after the name of the tag, we don't immediately have the closing angle bracket. 
we have a space, then we have href equals, and then we have the URL of the website that it's a link to, enclosed in quotes. Then we have the closing ang angle bracket. Then we have the text, then we have the closing tag. Notice that the closing tag is really no different than anything else. We don't put any attributes. Attributes <coughs> belong on the opening tag, not the closing tag. And notice that the attribute is part of the tag. That is, it's between the starting and ending angle bracket. All attributes are going to look the same in the sense that <coughs> there's going to be the name of the attribute, there's going to be an equal sign, and then enclosed in quotes is going to be the value of the attribute. Now in this case with the A link, the href attribute designates the name of the web page that we're linked to. So we put in the URL or the address of the web page. Yes? What was the origin of href? It's, uh, what does href mean? It means hypertext reference. In other words, it's the web page that we're linked to. Yeah. Uh huh. It. Uh. Yeah. You're right. I mean, some of them are confusing. Like, why is it an A tag? Well, the A stands for anchor. Why they call them anchor? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't make them up. They did. <laughs> now, in some cases, tags actually have a couple attributes. Um, in which case, the pair of attribute name, equal sign, and value will simply be, there'll be other attributes that are part of the starting tag. Now, what's between the start and ending tag for a link? That's the text that, if you click on, you go to the link. All right. You have to have something to click on to, to go to the link, and so typically it's going to be the text that you're going to uh, have to go to that link. So let's go and actually create this. Let's imagine I'm going to create a web page um, that, that talks about colleges in the area. All right. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to start up Notepad. First thing I have, remember, is a dot type declaration. That helps the browser figure out what kind of file it's dealing with. This is a doc type declaration for an HTML5 document. I then have an HTML tag, which says here's the start of my document, here's the end of my document. One thing I think is a good practice to do is as you're typing in the start tag, go in and automatically put in the end tag right after it. That way you don't lose track of it and don't forget to do it. All right. The HTML tag itself has a head section. And a body section. And within the head section, there is going to be a tag for the title. <coughs> so just about every web page, in fact, I, I suppose I could probably make as close to a blanket statement as I ever will. Every web page that you create is going to have at least this stuff in it. The doc type, the HTML tag, the head tag, the body tag. Again, remember that the way I'm formatting it with the white space is to make it readable on my end. It really doesn't have anything to do with the, the way the page displays. 
I indent it that way because then at a glance I can see what's part of the body and what's part of the head and so on down the line. All right, so let's go in and let's create I'll create a header tag. I'm putting in some of these general structure tags, header, footer, let's go put a little copyright message in the footer section. Then I might have an article on public colleges, on state colleges or community colleges and I might have another one on private colleges so I could have several articles so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to put in an article for community colleges an article for state schools, and then finally an article for private. <laughs> so again, what I'm doing really here is I'm creating a logical structure, all right? I'm creating a logical structure for uh, the page. I have my header that sort of explains what the page is about. I then have a series of articles. Each article is a, uh, about a particular topic. Finally, I have my footer tag, which goes at the bottom. All right. So now I can start putting in paragraphs in the articles. And as I put in paragraphs, I'm going to put in some hyperlinks so that we can review how the, the link tag works. So I'll put a paragraph and I'll say something like Lorraine County. Community College is in Elyria, Ohio. It recently celebrated its 50th anniversary, and so on down the line. All right. Now, again, it would make sense for the words Lorraine County Community College to be a link to Lorraine County Community College's page, homepage. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my A tag, and I'm going to say href equals, then in parentheses I'm going to put in the address. Now I happen to know the address of that page because I go to it, you know, a million times. If you didn't know the address of the page off, offhand, whoops, you could Google it, search for it, or whatever, and then simply copy it from the address line. That's a good way to do it to make sure that you don't make any typos.
and then I have my closing link. So, again, part of the start A tag, notice that we have the left angle bracket, the A, we don't immediately close that tag, all right? We have an attribute, and that attribute is the name of the web page we want to go to. So we have href equals, and then in closed in quotes, we have the address that we want to go to. And that address, because this is someone else's site, all right, because this is someone else's site, is going to start HTTP colon slash slash and so on. I then have the ending quote to end the address, the ending angle bracket to finish the start tag. I then have the text I want to link to, and then finally I have the closing A tag. So if we were to view this in a browser, which we're going to do in a second, the text, Lorain County Community College, will actually be a link to LC's website. So I'm going to go and save it. Again, um, I, I still notice a little confusion where folks think that there should be a text file and an HTML file. There's only the one HTML file. So I'm going to go up here and say File, Save. I'm going to change that from text document to All Files. And then I'm going to go on, save it to the desktop, and I'll make it colleges.html. All right. So now if we were to look at this page in our browser, it would look like this. Now notice that the word Lorain County Community College is underlined. All right. It's also, it might be a little hard to tell, uh, like a magenta color. All right, kind of a, a deep purplish color. And sure enough, if I click on it, it goes to that page. So that's how we create a link. Obviously, links are important aspect of web pages. Um, you know, it's really is really what was revolutionary about the web is that you know you, uh, scientists could view documents, um, you know, academic papers and. Instead of having to go to the library to dig out the references, they could just click on a reference and go directly to it. So it's an important part of the web, and that's how we do it. Beyond the actual mechanics of creating a link, there is the notion of an attribute, which again is something that is important to know because we'll see attributes like this pop up uh, for other tags. Questions about this? Yes? Have you tried, and I'm going to if you haven't, uh, <laughs> eliminate the HTTP colon slash slash or the www dot? Yes. Yes, I have. Why? Well, not on purpose. Um, no, it won't work. Okay. If it does not see the HTTP slash slash in front of it, it assumes that is not a page on someone else's web server. It assumes it's one of your pages and looks for it in the same folder as where your pages reside. We're going to go over that in a second. Let's say, for example, if I were to create a second web page um, uh, about um, joint vocational schools. Okay. So let's go in and let's. Save this page as vocational.html. So 
I'm going to make a second page here. So effectively what I've done is I've just made a copy of the page. So I now have two pages. I have a vocational page and I have a college page. So let's save both of them. So I have my colleges page. It looks like that. I have my vocational page that looks like that. Okay. And they each have their own links to, to other pages. Now, what if I want to link those two pages together? All right. What if I want to link those two pages together? All right. I can do that with a hyperlink, but my hyperlink is going to look different. My hyperlink is going to look more like what you described there. All right. Because I'm not linking to a page that's out on another web server. That's what we did when we linked to Lorain County JVS, and that's what we did when we linked to Lorain County Community College. I'm going to link to another one of my pages. So the syntax is slightly different. So if I wanted to link from the college page to the vocational page, the syntax of my link would look like this. I'm going to put a nav section here for navigation. And I could put a link that said So I can create an, a link to my page that's called vocational.html and call it vocational schools. Now notice the difference between the two links. The vocation, pardon me? There's no HTTP. There's no HTTP and there's no domain name in front of it indicating uh, a particular web server. It's simply the file name. And the assumption is, if you don't put anything preceding the file name, the assumption is that it's in the same folder as the original file, which these are. These are both on the desktop. I could then go and I could create a link from the college or from the vocational page to the college page in the same way.
So the vocational page could have a link to the college page. So vocational page, I could click on colleges and go to the colleges page. I forgot to save this one. colleges page, I can have a link to the vocational page. So we can go to vocational, we can go to colleges, and we can go back and forth between the two. Now, a couple things. One thing that I think is always good is to, to give you a sense of what can go wrong with this. All right, what are some of the things that could go wrong so that you know it when you see it? All right, first of all, what if you get the wrong name for a web page? So here I called it colleges. What if I were to just call it college and get the name wrong? If I click on the link, I'm going to get something like that. Now depending on the browser, I might get a slightly different error message. But essentially it's going to tell me you can't find that. Likewise, what if I forget the HTTP and put just like that in? Well, it'll be essentially the same sort of thing. If I click on that, it's not going to be able to find it. Now, notice what it did. It's looking for it on my computer. That's why it can't find it. Because without that HTTP in front of it, it doesn't realize that it's out on another computer. Questions? Yes? Do you have to permission to put a link to someone else's web page? No. Um, no. Any more than, than uh, I'm trying to think of, of an analogy. I mean, it's, it's considered to be public knowledge if it's out there. Now, to be sure, if there was if there was a secure website and you published like password information or something like that, that would be different. But again, to simply put a link to a public site like that, that that's fine. That's different than like incorporating content um, from someone else's site because you're actually linking to it. You're giving them credit. You know, so you're not saying. You know, like if I were to link to a news article, you know, I would be showing where the actual news article was and I'd be giving credit to the proper writer to it. That's different than like if I were to copy and paste it and put it on my page where I'd be sort of like claiming it was mine. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of a different thing. Other questions? Now we're in a position where we can start making our little navigation section. And one thing I do, even though, um, you know, as I'm forming a navigation section, what I will likely do is I will put all the links on there, even a link for the page that I'm currently on. 
So for example, in this case, I'm going to put the college, I'm going to put a link to the college page on the college page. I'm going to put a link to the vocational page on the vocational page. Why do I do that? Just to ensure consistency. That way, the links aren't moving around. All right, the links are always in the same, if I go to every single page, the first link will be college, the second link will be vocational, the third link might be some other kind of school, you know, travel, you know, school in, school abroad, or whatever, and so on down the line. And I think that's, that's beneficial in doing that. One thing associated with creating a navigation, and this can be used for any sort of list of items, are the list tags. Now there's two different kinds of lists. All right, there's an ordered list and an unordered list. An ordered list would be something like a ranking where the, the, the sequence is cut and dried, you know. Like if I was showing the, the standings in Major League Baseball in one of the divisions, right, there's definitely a hierarchy. The first place team is such and such. The second place team is such and such down the line. All right. So there's definitely a ranking. Or if I was going to list, you know, um, you know, amount of sales of uh, mobile phones, and I was going to rank them, you know, whoever sold the most belongs on top, then the second most, and the third most, and so on. If, however, I'm simply going to put a list of things I'm interested in. Those really could go in any order, right? I mean, there's no like ranking of that sort of thing. It's, it's pretty much can be in any order. And for that, I'm going to use an unordered list. Now, navigations are typically done via an unordered list because a navigation, you know, the order makes sense, but the order isn't something that's cut and dried. I could rearrange. I could put vocational before college or I could put college before vocational. All right. And with an unordered list, we have a UL tag that goes around the list, and each item on the list is contained in an LI tag. So we have something like this. So start of my unordered list, the end of my unordered list. Each item then is an LI. For as many items as I have. There's only one UL and end UL per list. There can be as many items there can be as many LI tags as there are items on the list. All right. Sometimes students will use like a UL for every item. And you don't need a UL for every item. You need a UL for the list. So if you have one list of things, then you only have one UL. Now, this blank line here, what can it be? Well, it can be like uh, pretty much anything, right? In our case, it's going to be links because we're going to make a little list of links and that's going to be our navigation. Now, I can promise you you're not probably not going to like the way that it looks, all right, because it's going to be a bulleted list with items stacked on top of each other. And you might not want your navigation to look that way. You might say that that's kind of clunky looking and it doesn't look really clean and all that. But remember, that's an aspect of the way it looks. Therefore, that's something that we're going to control via CSS. So for now, just sort of bear with me and do your navigation as an unordered list. It'll look clunky, but eventually we'll be able to uh, sort it out. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to put a navigation and I'm going to create an unordered list.
In this case, I have only two. I could have as many as I had. And then I'm going to close up my list. And then I'm going to copy that navigation section to my other page. Save them both. And there's my navigation. All right. I can go to the colleges page. I can go to the vocational page. The LI tag is what makes a list item right, and that's what makes it a bullet. Now, it's a bullet as opposed to a number because I used a UL for unordered list. The other kind of list that you have is OL, which stands, whoops, which stands for ordered list. Which would be numbered. Now, in this case, it doesn't really make sense. I mean, the order that I put those links in, I mean, they might make some sort of sense, but in essence, they're arbitrary. I could have put them in another order and it would be pretty much the same. Yes? Um, it is largely up to you. Um, Keep in mind that initially as we create these pages, you don't have a lot of control over the physical layout of it. Everything's just going to sort of flow from top to bottom. Um, there's a couple of sort of reasonable places where navigation is typically found. Usually navigation is on the top, on the right, or on the left. All right. So, you know, um, the biggest thing when you're doing this is to be consistent. All right. Uh, in other words, if you if you put it in a particular position on one page, you probably want to put it on in that position on the other pages. If you're talking about like within a project, a project that consists of multiple pages, you'd want the navigation to look consistent. So looking consistent is probably more important than saying it has to be on the top or it has to be on the right or something like that. Other questions. Can you see what? All right. There's one other kind of link that we're going to talk about now. There's actually a couple other kinds of links. You can actually link on a mobile device to a phone number so that when the user presses the link, it actually dials a phone for you. All right. Uh, you can link to email accounts so that when you click the link, it opens up your email um, application, and you can you can send an email that way. Um, and again, those are probably covered in the book if I remember correctly. Um, but the one that I want to talk about is a link within a page. All right, and. To get this to really work, I'm going to go and I'm going to add some dummy text to this page. Because this really works best when you have pages that have a lot of text on them. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to put something on my page called Greek text. And Greek text is essentially dummy text. So I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this dummy text into my colleges page just so that, so that I have a big page.
consider this to be like placeholder text. And so I'm putting it in here. A lot of times when you're designing a page, you might not have the completed text yet. Um, therefore, you might put this dummy text in just so that um, you can give the people an idea of what the page is going to look like when it's done. All right. In this case, it's got to be valuable because I want the page to be long. All right, because I'm going to put in some uh, internal links on this page. All right, so let's go look at that college's page now. All right, so I have this dummy text. Now, depending on how big the browser window is, maybe I can only see a section of it at a time. All right. So I'm seeing a section of that. And to get to the state schools, I have to scroll. To get to private schools, I have to scroll further. It'd be nice if there was a, uh, a link up here that I could just click on and jump right to that section. All right? That's what I'm going to put in now. And I'm going to do this in the colleges page. So I'm going to create a link. All right. But first, in order to create a link to a certain section of the page, I need to identify the section of the page with an ID. So I'm going to say ID equals community. ID equals state. ID equals private. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to jump to a certain section. Well, in, er in order to jump to a certain section, that certain section has to have a name to go to. So I'm going to give each section an ID. Now, I did notice that I, when you did the ID, uh -huh. So under the H1, you put the ID. Oh, and then there is a quote. Okay. Exactly. What is this, uh, 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 what is this in other words? This is an attribute. Okay. Just like the href was an attribute. This is simply another kind of attribute that I can have on the page. To say, not only is this an H1, here's a characteristic of it. I want to call this H1 community. All right, so it's an attribute of it. Now when I create a link, I can go in and say a href equals, now this is sort of none of the above. This is not a page on an external website, and this is not one of my pages. This is a section of one of my pages. So when I want to go to a section of one of my pages, I put the pound sign here and the ID. And I can do the same for the other two. So now when I view this page, I have these links here, and notice when I go to them, when I click on it, it takes me right to that section. If I click on private colleges, it takes me to that private colleges. This is typically done when you have a very long page. A lot of times where I've seen it done is with frequently asked questions. The frequently asked questions will be an uh, unordered list at the top of the page 
When you click on it, you go to a section of the page that has the answer to the question. I've also often seen it with like phone directories. All right? In other words, a company's phone directory. They might have the letters of the alphabet or the department or something like that on the top of the page. And when you click that page, you don't go to a new page, you simply go to a different section of the page. Yes? Can add the ID to any element, correct? Yes. Um, I will say there are some HTML5 compatibility issues, but essentially, yes, you can add it to any element. Um, the one last thing to look at is we could also make a link to go back to the top. To go to the top of the page, it's simply pound sign with nothing else. So I can put in a link to go to the top of the page. So I could go to state colleges. If I want to go back to the top, then I'm back to the top. So we've seen sort of three different kinds of links. All of them uh, follow the same structure. That is, they're all A tags. They all have an href attribute. They all then have text between the starting A tag and the ending A tag. What's, difference between, what's different between the, the three different kinds of links that we've examined is what the href is. If it's simply one of our other pages, we simply put in the name of the file .html, you know, whatever the name of the file is. If it is someone else's web page or website, we put in the full URL starting with http colon slash slash. In other words, we simply copy what's in the address of the browser. Finally, if it is a section of the page that we want to go to, we use a pound sign and the name of the ID where the ID is the section of the page that we want to go to. So we can get around pretty well simply by using those three things. We can go within a page, we can go to our other pages, or we can link to uh, another page out on the web. Any questions uh, on this? There's no, there's no way. Well, we'd do it the same way, but they have to put they would have to put an ID in in their page for you to do it. In other words, if there's a section of the page that would be called community on some other page, you would say http colon lccc.edu slash uh, index.html pound sign community. So it would go after the page name. Uh, likewise, if it was another one of my pages. I could link from the vocational page direct to the private school page by simply saying colleges.html pound sign uh, that. And sometimes that's done. So it's a CSS That can be done a couple different ways. That can be done uh, a couple different ways. That can be done, uh, s some things like that can be done via CSS, some things like that can be done via JavaScript. Other questions? All right. Oh, go ahead. Right. In other words, in other words, there would be there would be a main list that would have the main navigation, and then for each little sub navigations, there'd be like a sub list that would that would have, and through through JavaScript would make one of the sub lists pop up. Uh, excuse me, 
depending on where the mouse is positioned. We learn JavaScript. We touch on JavaScript towards the end of the semester. We don't spend tons of time on it, but we do have a, an intro to it to give you a sense really of, of what it sort of brings to the table. Other questions? All right, let's see up in lab.